So we finally made it up to Sardik to start our eight day ski tour and trip uh, in one of Europe's last wildernesses up here. And from the little glimpse we've had so far, it definitely lives up to its reputation. It's been quite a tiring journey so far. We got on the train last night in Stockholm and uh, got off this morning at about five o'clock in the morning, changed to another train, brought all our sleds across to the next train, then got onto a bus, finally made it up to Saltalokta, unloaded off the bus, packed all our sleds into some snowmobiles, and then we had about a two hour snowmobile ride out to the edge of the National Park out here. And uh, if anybody's ever taken a snowmobile ride before, you'll know it's very, very cold. So everybody was looking forward to getting on our skis, getting moving. Uh, we've got a shorter ski ahead of us today. Uh, we're gonna make camp, have an earlier evening, I reckon, and then tomorrow we'll have a bit more time to make a bit more distance as we continue. Um, we're all pulling sleds behind, as you can see. Here's the team out front. Can't really see them that well, but there's seven of us in total. Uh, it's quite overcast today. Right now we're hoping for some clearer weather and we'll be able to see some of these stunning valleys around here. Um, so, yeah, see how it goes. So it's day four uh, on our trip out here in Sardik and it's been a, an intense few days. Uh, yesterday we did some uh, snow bivac training and then uh, some went off for a ski and uh, some of us went down to a little cabin. I need to turn off the water because it's boiling right now. Um, I'm getting very steamy in here. And then uh, last night, unfortunately, I came down with the a bit of a fever, got into the sleeping bag about 5.30 and didn't get out till about 7 o'clock this morning. So it's a, a solid run in the sleeping bag. Two hot water bottles and I was still freezing cold. Um, but feeling a bit better today, but the rest of the team has gone up to do a top um, up on a peak close to here. Svarta Steppenstop. And so I've stayed back in camp uh, with and there as well, just to try and fight off the, the worst of whatever it was that, that was affecting me. And then tomorrow we've got another big, we're packing down camp and moving another 20k or so back down through the valley. Uh, so I want to keep my uh, strength for that. Day five, up in Sardik, and we're headed back towards South Alokta. We had a base camp um, a little bit further up behind us for a few days. Today we've got about 18 kilometers skiing uh, ahead of us. Up to our right, we're just skiing past Birke Bakta, which is like the madman's mountain. Uh, it's like 1,780 meters tall or so. Um, but it comes straight up out of the lake and is quite impressive. It's been really, really sunny for the whole day today. Um, when we woke up, it was super cold. Still, and really, really sunny. We've got a little bit more cloud cover now. It's a uh, much easier ski for the rest of the day. It's uh, much flatter along the lake, which we're coming onto now, and then down through um, kind of a river system before we kind of get to camp this evening. Uh, and then we set up camp and we've still got a few more, a few more days ahead of us. Now the weather can change in the mountains from uh, super calm and sunny this morning to now pretty windy.
day six. And man, did the weather change. As we came into camp, it was just howling winds and dumping snow. Uh, Thomas had to get up last night at about 12 o'clock and dig out the tent because uh, we were getting completely snowed in and all the ventilation um, was getting covered up. morning we're out making our way towards South Delocta and we've got about 12 and a half kilometers to cover today yesterday we thought was going to be our, our big stretch of just over 18 kilometers but we have a mammoth task ahead of us today uh, the whole way or so it seems so far is about waist deep snow quite relatively light powdery snow not super super uh, ice and sugar powdery snow but relatively light but it means breaking trail with these sleds is really really difficult you can uh, just about push your way through it we're having to take take turns on on breaking trail some person up front somebody up front with uh, no sled breaking and then the rest of us with our sleds pulling behind and then taking it in turns to pull two sleds along the track but I think we're covering about 500 maybe 750 meters per hour and we've got uh, 12 and a half K today but we're not gonna make it to our planned camp spot which means long days the next couple of days we're really hoping that at some point we're gonna come across either less snow, more wind pack snow, or some sort of snowmobile track. That would be ideal. Six hours later. Still going. This has been one of the hardest days skiing. I've ever done at least. I don't know about the rest of the group, but starting off with uh, waist deep snow up until lunch, absolutely exhausting. And then after lunch, it started to we get a little bit less snow. So it was about knee deep snow then after lunch uh, and then we've just been slogging away and we've hit the moraines of Slugga, the mountain that's just up ahead of us here like uh, where the glaciers pushed all the rocks down and where they've all kind of settled so it's just like slowly getting uh, altitude but it's just bumps after bump after bump after bump so you go up and down and up and down and around and around and it's a maze of trying to find your way through it and we're gonna just keep pushing we're about well, we're meant to be in camp right now uh, and we're about 4k back from where we're meant to be. We're very, very much behind today and we have been for the whole day. It's, uh, we should be skiing like two to three kilometers per hour, but we're making like maybe 500 meters to one kilometer per hour at best. This has just been so slow going and breaking trail up front is almost impossible. We've gone from seven sleds down to six now. We've packed one of the sleds into uh, the rest of our sleds which makes them a lot heavier but it means one person can be out front and uh and break trail but yeah it's it's tiring i'm exhausted i was up front breaking trail uh with my sled for for a good while and 
I'm really, really feeling it in my legs right now. I don't normally feel uh, this tired in my legs, but yeah, we're getting there. We'll see, we'll see what time we get into camp. I don't know, I'm uh, exhausted. <laughs> oh, I need some snacks, I need some water. <laughs> Good morning, Tommy. Uh, how did you sleep? I wanted to see. <laughs> food, ate a block of chocolate with a jar of peanut butter and had an alright sleep, quite a sweaty sleep but but still my, I'm feeling it in my legs though today. Are you? Yeah. yeah. find our way out of the ravine. Another day, another ravine. <laughs> and we've got a big day again ahead of us today. This is the hardest bit of it, getting out of the ravine, trying to get up onto the kind of plateau underneath Slugga. Marcus has gone one way up this one. Mats and Bernard have gone another way up that one. Slugger. Slugger. Shit, look how high Mats is up there. Holy shit. Holy shit. <sighs> and so we climb up out of the ravine, up onto the flat, soon. You got this, Marcus. Oh, trying to traverse with Pulka. This is no good. Good work. Good work. That was steep, steep going up. You fart again. <laughs> Look, I'm just moving. I'm just moving. Just leak it out. <laughs> this is going to be hard to concentrate now. Last day in Sarek. 
This is our last morning. It's uh, as windy this morning as it was last night when we set up uh, camp about 10 meters per second and it's about 10 meters per second now. The tent ripped a little bit um, uh, last night from the wind. Yeah, I didn't sleep that well last night. I think it was either the wind or Thomas was snoring that uh, kept me up a little bit. We've got our little mascot here. This guy's been with us for the whole trip. It was rolled up in the tent on the first day we found him. Amazing eight days. It's also been a long eight days as well. I felt it yesterday. I was losing a lot of energy. We came across this big lake, which is flat. Oh, we've got all sorts of ice and snow coming down inside the tent now. Getting everything wet, which is flat. Um, and meant to be easy skiing. But the problem was is that it's uh, really boring as well because you're just going straight in a straight line for about eight kilometers it took us quite a bit of time to get across the lake and i was struggling then with energy we've got about an hour now to pack down camp and and get together uh, all of our stuff and then a couple hours ski and then we're back at the mountain station